Let us look at some examples uh, and then uh, it will help us to uh, understand. So, let us look at some examples. Okay. Let us look at why we started all this was let us take let f b a b to r be uh, monotone, say monotonically increasing. Let us say it is monotonically increasing. Okay. So, let us take a partition. Let I want to calculate uh, the variation and, uh, and check whether it is a bounded variation or not. So, let us take a part any general partition x n. So, f uh, a b to r, I did not write a b left f a b to r b. Okay. So, let b a partition. Maybe. Then, what is f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 absolute value? Function is monotonically increasing x i is on the right side of x i minus 1. So, this value is equal to f of x i minus no need to put absolute value because the function is monotonically increasing. right? So, implies what is the variation of f with respect to the partition p. So, what will be the variation? So, we said it by definition it was sigma 1 to n f of x i minus x i minus 1 absolute value and that is equal to there is no need to put absolute value. So, that is sigma i equal to 1 to n f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 and what is that now? terms cancel out now, right. So, it is f of b minus f of a, right. So, whatever b, so implies v a b of f exists equal to f b minus f of a. Hence, f is of bounded variation. It is a function of bounded variation. If it was uh, decreasing, the only difference would have come here, this would have been reversed, right. So, then it will be f a minus f of b, right. Still, so same proof works except for a difference of that sign bounded variation. So, similarly let me write f monotonically decreasing implies f of bounded variation. Okay, let us look at another example. Let us look at the function just now we looked at the indicator function. So, consider uh, f on say a b to r. So, f of x is equal to 1 if x belongs to is a rational inside a b. If it is a rational number, the value is 1, it is 0 if x otherwise. Okay. So, that means, if it is irrational, the value is 0. 
at the rational the value is 1. So, what is it? It is an indicator function of rationals in A B, right? It is an indicator function of. But it takes two only two values. So, what do you think is the variation of this? It is not monotonically increasing, neither monotonically decreasing. So, what do you think is a variation of uh, this function? Looks like yes, looks like 1? No. How much? You see, variation is how much up and down it sort of goes. That was the right. But this function is going up and down very often. At rational points, it goes up. And in rational point, it comes down. Right? So, it looks like it is varying too much. So, it is not a function of bounded variation. So, claim guess is f is not bounded variation. This is only a guess, right? Because it is going up and down very frequently. So, how does one write that? That idea, I can visualize it up and down, but how do I write it? So, the idea is here is a b and I want to say that the variation, I can find a partition where the variation is equal to n say. For any n, any natural number n, I can find a function, find a partition so that the variation on that partition is equal to n. Then when I take the supremum, it will be infinite, right? Is it okay? So, for example, if I take the point A, okay, let us take a rational here and a irrational here. So, some point uh, let me take x and y, where x is a rational and y is um, the complement of that. So, what what do you want me to write? I will write a b minus let us write rationals itself, it is ok. So, at this point, this is a rational point. So, what is the value at the rational? It was 1. At this point, the value is 0. So, if I take a partition in which these two points come, then in that summation, at least the number 1 will appear, right. So, I can choose any finite number of such pairs, n number of such pairs, right. So, the summation of that variation over this partition would be at least n. Right? Because there will be something contributed by this, something contributed by that also. So, it will be bigger than or equal to n. So, we can, so let me write, so we can choose, okay, for every n, we can choose points x n, uh, let us write a less than x 1, less than y 1, points, so let me write x n, y n such that, okay, uh, let me, I want to write x n, y n or x k, y k, let me just improve it, so right, choose points x k, y k, where k is between 1 to n such that a is less than y 1, is less than x 2, less than y 2, is less than x n, less than y n, less than b, right. So, the pairs, so keep in mind I am looking at the pairs in between. So, this is one pair, oh sorry. So, this is one pair, this is another pair and this is the nth pair, where what do I want? we want say that each x i or each uh, x k is rational, each y k is irrational. Mm. 
then if I call that as the partition P, if I call those points as the partition P, then the variation A, B, F or call it as P n if you like, P n will be what? It will be value at x 1 minus the value at A absolute value plus absolute value y 1 x 1 plus value at uh, difference between the absolute value f of x 2 minus y 1. So, I am just saying that this is bigger than or equal to sigma f at y i minus f at x i. Right? Other terms I just drop, only keep the values difference. So, which is equal to n? Because x i is rational, y i is irrational, right? Is that okay? Other terms I have just dropped. So, instead of equality is bigger than or equal to now. So, implies V a b of f is not finite, so one writes it as plus infinity. So, this function very nice, very simple is not a function of bounded variation. Okay. Many examples you can construct of such things. So, probably I think let me just uh, say what is it I want to know. Right. So, let me because we do not want to prove too many things for the functions of bounded variation. Uh, probably in a higher course uh, you will come across these things. Let me just because I am not writing, so let me show you. Yeah, I think this is okay. Yeah, we had already analyzed many things about uh, monotone functions, so let us. So, it has jump discontinuities, they are countably many and so on. Right? We already had looked at continuous function which is 1 1 it is strictly monotone, those properties we already looked at uh, in other. So, here is, so let me anyway revise. So, saying that a function a b to r, this is a partition, then this is called the variation of f with respect to the partition p. right? and look at the supremum that is called normally called the total variation and uh, if it is finite we say the function is a bounded variation okay so uh, okay here is uh, every monotone function is uh, of bounded variation that we just now saw okay is ab here is another one if f is lipschitz function remember what was the lipschitz function let me just uh, say what was the Lipschitz function, another example of. Uh, so, f on any domain actually, let us write it on a b to r, we said it was Lipschitz. The German mathematician Lipschitz who defined it first, if there is some alpha such that f x minus f y is less than or equal to alpha times x minus y for every x y belonging to a b. So, how much change in f comes with respect to the change in is a directly proportional kind of a thing, right? less than or equal to alpha times change is less than. We uh, this we had come across actually when we said that every Lipschitz function is uniformly continuous, right? So, alpha times 
epsilon delta or you can write sequence whenever a sequence x and y n goes to 0 that will imply f of x and y n also goes to 0. So, uniform continuity. We are saying that this is a function of bounded variation also because when I look at f that variation f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 that will be less than alpha times x i minus x i minus 1. So, that summation terms will cancel out what will be left is b minus a. So, the variation with respect to any partition is less than or equal to alpha times b minus a, right. It is something like monotone function, but even if it is not monotone, it is uh, still true. So, every Lipschitz function is of bounded variation because variation a to b uh, of uh, f with respect to p will be less than or equal to alpha times b minus a for every partition p. Right? So, because of this inequality. So, it is of bounded uh, variation. Just now we saw that this function is not a function of bounded variation. Okay? It is not of bounded variation. So, we can give some more examples. Okay, here is here is one example. This function. This also we had come across while trying to do something about connected subsets of R2. So, the, as you come near 0, the graph goes up and down very fast, right. So, again you can see that the variation of this function will be infinite, because you can always pick up points where the value is 1 and minus 1, right, points in 0, 1. So, this function is not a bounded variation, okay. So, here are some properties which will not prove Okay, but just try to understand why uh, you will come across these things probably in a higher course. If a function is a bounded variation, then it should be bounded function, right? Is it clear? Because if it is unbounded, that means you can go on increasing the values. So, you can enclose those points in the partition if you like, uh, or you can simply uh, prove also mod f of x is less than or equal to mod of x minus a plus uh, mod. So, trivial partitions you can choose. There exist functions which are bounded, but not of bounded variation. Just now we example that 0, 1 a rational. So, it is a bounded function, it takes only two values, it is not a bounded variation. Bounded variation functions have nice properties. So, this is called the algebra of functions of bounded variation. f and g are bounded variation, then f plus g, f minus g, f g alpha times f all are functions of bounded uh, variation. Okay. Every monotone function is a bounded variation. Uh, one can define many things uh, like you can define the variation instead of full interval a b only in the part a to x or x in a b and show many properties. So, uh, just go through these properties once. Uh, but do not look at the proofs, because we are not uh, going to ask you. We basically that if uh, c is a point in between, then the variation over a to c is less than or equal to variation over the whole interval, that is obvious. And it says the variation adds up, variation a to c plus c to b is same as variation a to b. So, they are functions of bounded variation, so these are the properties. Okay. And this a to x, x belonging to a b, this itself is an increasing function and uh, using these properties one can prove uh, this is also an increasing function. So,